after Jesus' parade into Jerusalem, after the palm-waving crowds had gone back home, after the shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord, save us, were silent, and after the scheming scribes and Pharisees decided to wait until Passover was over to arrest Jesus, we learn that Jesus and his followers those we call the 12 disciples, and the women who also accompanied him were at the home of Simon a leper. They were having dinner. So to help us imagine this scene, the room where they are eating is just filled with men because that was the custom of that day. And in those days, folks would eat their meals lounging around a low table that was set in the middle of the room. Now I imagine that there was some tension in that room. Even though the disciples know that Jesus doesn't follow the rules, they may have been a bit uncomfortable eating in a home of a leper. Simon, the host in all his household, would have been considered unclean by the religious leaders. And on top of this, the disciples know that the religious leaders are closing in on their Jesus, on beloved rabbi. And yes, the Pharisees say they will wait until after Passover, but will they? And the disciples may have been still excited about the crowds that welcomed Jesus at the entrance of the holy city. What did it mean that the crowds would yell out for Jesus to save them? And they were calling their rabbi, Lord. And yet, how could Jesus save them from the empire? And then, in the middle of their meal, a woman slips into the room with an alabaster jar filled with nard, a very precious essential oil. And she breaks the lid off the jar and pours it over Jesus' head. Can you imagine that moment, the dissonance in the room, the amazing aroma of this precious oil filling that space, breaking through that tension? And Jesus graciously receives her gift. But some in the room grow angry and declare that her act is outrageous, wasteful, perhaps even criminal. And they scold her and tell her she should have sold the oil and given the money to the poor. I imagine that she knew the risk she was taking when she entered that room. And yet her love and her compassion for Jesus was greater than her fear of their response. As soon as the group scolds her, Jesus immediately silenced them, telling them, leave her alone. She has done something significant for me. She has anointed my body ahead of time. She understands my calling. There will always be time for you to care for the poor, but you will not always have me with you. She is preparing my body for its burial. And then Jesus says something that is often forgotten. Truly, I tell you, whenever, wherever the good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Her actions are so significant that Jesus wants the whole world to know about her. She is nameless. She didn't ask for fame, but Jesus wants her to be remembered. Her action of giving the best she has, something that is worth a year's salary, is to be included in our understanding of the gospel, the good news. Now, I must admit, in past years, I haven't remembered this woman during Holy Week. I remember Jesus telling his disciples to remember him every time they break the bread and drink from the cup. The woman with the alabaster jar gets forgotten. 
As I sat with her story this week, I was struck with several things. That those around the table were more aware of the cost of the perfume than they were of the woman. She has no name in scripture. They were more concerned about the bottom line, the finances, not about her, her actions, nor are they aware of Jesus's needs. This woman who followed Jesus alongside the disciples that were present with Jesus during that time, were present with his sermons during his healings, his prophecies of death and resurrection, they not only heard Jesus tell about his future death and resurrection, they not only heard, but this woman not only heard Jesus, she believed. She believed Jesus when he said he would die and be resurrected. And she believed and came to the conclusion that she must anoint him when she had the opportunity. There's another aspect to her anointing. If we look back into the Old Testament, the prophets were the ones who anointed kings in a similar way as the woman anointed Jesus. So could her action have been have could her action have been prophetic in a sense that she knew that she was anointing the king of kings not for his coronation but for his death in either case what she did was only seen as frivolous wasteful and Jesus on the other hand receives her act of extravagant generosity as an act of giving that really matters, a holy act of stewardship. This woman, this, Jesus is, for this, to this woman, Jesus is far more important than a jar of expensive oil. And so one way that we can honor Jesus' request to remember this nameless woman is to follow in her footsteps. So as you go into this holy week and beyond, let's consider her story and give it a place in our lives. Let us consider what holy acts of stewardship that we can participate in. Let us consider how we can share our love for Jesus in extravagant ways. And yes, it may look foolish, even frivolous to others. And yes, we too may come against barriers that will attempt to thwart our desire to express compassion in extravagant ways. But this woman shows us that extravagant love and compassion is the catalyst to our courage that will help us break with tradition and cultural status quo so that all can be fully present with our Lord. In order to follow this woman, we will need to be present with one another, aware of the other's need, in order to give what they need at the moment. Helen Pearson, in her book, Do What You Have the Power to Do, says that song, dance, poetry, art, drama, painting, music are not luxuries, not frivolous. They are essentials to the Christian experience. They take us to God's heartbeat and the rhythms of life. They are the essence of ourselves and of God. And so, yes, consider what you have to give, what treasure you have saved in your alabaster jar. Consider what treasure that you have to give in your alabaster jar that needs to be broken open and poured out for the sake of Jesus. And perhaps it is your life that will be poured out in humble and grateful service for the sake of the world. Amen.